everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Remington Rand, makers of The Remington, the world's number one electric shaver, present What's My Line? And now, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, again pinch hitting for Steve Allen, is our charming and humorous and talented young friend, Peter Lind Hayes. And directly on my left, the lovely lady and the star of her own uh, other television show on another nutwork, The Talent Patrol. <laughs> the one and only Arlene Francis. And on my left, a gentleman who is leaving us for a well-deserved vacation, six days in sunny Florida. But he's going to come back to us filled with bottled sunshine next Sunday, Mr. Bennett, sir. <laughs> And on our left is our, our panel moderator. And I hope we'll all be sympathetic and understanding with him tonight because he hasn't won a plaque or an award now for almost four days. <laughs> on my left, poor old John Charles Daly. Thank you. Thank you and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to What's My Line. We've got some people who are visiting us tonight and uh, they brought with them some occupations which, as much as I love my friends over on the panel, I trust... Uh, the panel is going to have a lot of fun and also a lot of difficulty finding out what these folks do. They're very nice people, and uh, with them we're going to have a famous guest challenger before the panel a bit later on. Uh, but we ought to get things underway, I think, and it's time for the experts to meet our first challenger whose job has to be spotted. So would you sign in, please, sir? Alfred... Lawrence, is that right, sir? <laughs> Mr. Lawrence, would you tell us, first of all, where you're from? New York City. New York City? Oh, well, it's nice. You're a friend and a neighbor, and there are some more friends and neighbors over there, but watch them. Would you go over and say hello to them? Meet them, please. Mr. Lawrence. Hello, Mr. Lawrence. Hello, Mr. Lawrence. All right, Mr. Lawrence, over here now, if you will, and sit down next to me. And uh, I'm sure that you know that we get the panel one free guess as to what a challenger's line may be at this point. And we always begin those free guesses with Dorothy Kilgallen. I think he's an importer of bagels from New Jersey. <laughs> an importer of bagels from New Jersey, Mr. Hay. I think he's a cruise director on a Fifth Avenue bus. <laughs> Miss Francis. I think he's a bookbinder. Mr. Sir. Looks like the manager of the House of Chan restaurant. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mr. Al Lawrence of New York, and at the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. Mr. Lawrence, I'm also sure you know the rules, but every time I can flip one of these here cards, it means that uh, you have been able to give a no answer to the panel and ten flips and they're a flop. That's one where you started last week. Somebody wrote it and gave us that one. We like it. Ten <laughs> flips and they're a flop. All right, are you all ready to go, sir? Mr. Lawrence is salaried. Let's begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett, sir. Mr. Lawrence, is there a product involved in what you do? Yes. Is it a product that might be used around the home? Yes. Could it be used by the lady of the house? Yes. Yes. Uh, if she used it, uh, would it come in contact with her person? Yes. Well, if a very glamorous and fascinating creature like, let's say, Dorothy or Arlene, used this product, would it make them even more fascinating to men? <laughs> It would? It well, what is it? <laughs> I think it, uh, we should say it certainly could. <laughs> Do you, does does uh, poor Mr. Daly mean by that that it also might make them less glamorous to men under certain circumstances? Under certain circumstances. Under, yes, not. under certain circumstances. I think it's Sometimes more, sometimes less. Uh, this wouldn't be, by any chance, some of that gooey cream that a woman smears all over her face? No, this is not a gooey cream that a woman smears all over her face. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. 
Uh, is this anything that would either alter, improve, or reveal, or conceal a woman's figure? <laughs> no way! <laughs> no, I think you're being too generous, Mr. Lawrence. This would not alter, reveal, conceal, or what was the other one? Improve. Or improve a woman's figure. No, I don't think so. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Hayes. Has it anything to do with, uh, a woman's hairpiece? <laughs> no, no. Nothing to do with the hairpiece. Sure, the woman's hairpiece knows. <laughs> Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Can this be consumed? Yes. Uh, is it, uh, liquid rather than solid? Yes. Uh, is it anything that one might have at a festive gathering? Yes. And wouldn't it be pretty glad to have it? <laughs> Does it uh, come usually in a bottle? Yes. And it would make me look better sometimes, huh? <laughs> is it something that you might toast in the New Year with? Yes. It is, has an alcoholic content of some kind? Yes. Uh, you deal in spirits of some sort, then? Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and what's your telephone number? No. Uh, is it uh, a grain liquor? No. no. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Oh, Sir. Mr. Lawrence, would this liquor have uh, some of the nectar of the grape in it? Yes. Uh, does it fizzle and bubble at any time? <laughs> yes. Are you a champagne fella? <laughs> <laughs> So it tickles the nose, but now you tickle us and tell us what relationship Mr. Lawrence has to champagne, and we're in. Well, if he's in, you said you were in New York City, didn't you, Mr. Lawrence? Mm -hmm. Then you can't make champagne unless you do it in your bathtub. <laughs> I'll tell you we're a champagne dealer. A champagne dealer? It'll Sell make it five champagne. down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, uh, your definitions tonight are puzzling me, John. Uh, does, would that rule out salesman? No. Well, is he a salesman? Yes, that's what it is. Champagne salesman. Does our, hmm? Isn't a dealer a salesman? No, actually, a salesman sells to the dealer who then retails to the public. I mean, in the connotation that we are forced by sheer circumstance, and believe me, it's only that? circumstance. We're going to get a whole lecture on economics. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mr. Lawrence, you, are, I believe, represent the New York State Wine Association, and uh, New York has got reason to be proud of the wine. Finger Lakes. Finger Lakes area. Wonderful thing. Well, uh, I think that we did rather well with them, and uh, I hope you had a lot of fun, because it was nice to have your argument. We will send your money to Boys Town. We certainly will. Thank you very much, Mr. Lawrence. Good night, sir. All right, let's see what we can do with another challenger. Will you sign in, please, sir? Simon... Shaw, Pilshaw, Pilshaw. How are you, sir? How are you feeling? Fine. <laughs> Where are you from? Middleborough, Massachusetts. Middleborough, Massachusetts. Oh, it's a nice country. It's beautiful. I got some nice country for you to go into. Right over there. Will you go over and meet the panel, please? Shake hands, Pilshaw. How are you doing, sir? Let me see your hand. Hard, yeah. solid grip. Uh huh. You're going to meet a tall, dark girl. And it's me. <laughs> How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Hello, Mr. How do you do? All right, Mr. Pilshaw, if you'll come over here now and sit down next to me, we'll get into the free guess, which the panel has, because they have had a chance to meet you. And we begin the free guesses with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Well, um, I don't know, but whatever he makes, I bet it's bigger than a bread box. <laughs> Mr. Hay. I think he breaks in dancing shoes for Arthur Murray. Miss Bradford. Oh, I was just going to say, I think he uh, 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 tans hides, <laughs> I should say. Leather. Mr. Sir? I think Mr. Pulshaw works on a newspaper. He's a poof reader. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. Let our viewers have another look at Mr. Pulshaw, and at the same time, we will tell them what his line is. Panel's got a date. Mr. Pilshaw, you understand what we do with these things here. Ten times we flip a card and you've got it all, hands down. All right, Mr. Pilshaw is salaried. Uh, with that, let's begin the general questioning with uh, Peter Lindhay. Oh, um, do you, sir, deal in a product? Yes. Well, is it um, 
the product that I might use? Yes. <laughs> well, is it a product if I use it right here and now? Apparently, I'd look pretty crazy. Is that true? true? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, well, you might. It might be considered that this was not the proper place for you and the product to get together. <laughs> Well, is it uh, a product, then, for instance, that Arlene might use? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is it something that she also might wear? Yes. Can be said to be worn, yes. Well, I can see why I'd look crazy, because we don't have the same tailors. <laughs> uh, something that she might wear? Yes. Uh, it might be described as being worn. Well, is it... Uh, the average American. From the audience. Just a moment. We'll have, I'm afraid, to, to let the rulings of the chair stand. This could be described as being warm. Well, we is it something that the that. average American girl wouldn't use every day? <laughs> this is something that the average American girl wouldn't use every day. No. I, no, she I wouldn't. No. Yes, yes, it would not be used every day <laughs> by an average girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, is it something that might, uh, well, might come in handy around this time of the year in Florida? Mm hmm. Yes. <laughs> Well, is it something that when worn uh, by a gal is, uh, well, it exposes uh, uh, much of her, much of her? <laughs> well, now, wait a minute, I think that we've got to get a relationship. Are you intending to inquire, uh, does a young lady wear this and this alone, and is she therefore muchly exposed? Is that the question as you pose it? Don't fall for that, Peter. Well, uh... <laughs> like a trap in a trap. <laughs> Remember, I'm new at this game. <laughs> you don't what you mean it. by that question? I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is, for instance, uh, would Miss America wear this and parade around in high heels? In the city? Would she wear this and parade around? No, I don't think so. Not in high heels and parade no. around in high city. One down and nine to go, Miss Fred. Is this something that touches the skin? Skin uh, from the uh, shoulders up. Yes. It is something that might be used on the head, in other words. Some part of the face or head. This yes. product. Yes, could be. Yes. <clears throat> uh, is it, would it in any way be considered a beauty aid, or would it be bought in a drugstore for uh, that purpose, to in some way beautify or help a woman's looks? No. Small conference. I read books. I've got to have a conference. Could we have a conference? Can we have a conference? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pilshaw says this is not used to beautify. I must accept his uh, ruling in the matter. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Well, Mr. Pilshaw, it's obviously worn for some purpose, and if it's not worn to beautify, is it worn to improve the person who wears it in some way? I think Mr. Pilshaw might agree that it is intended to improve in some way the person who could be said to be wearing it, yes. Is it worn above the nose? It could be. Yes, could be. <laughs> is it worn above the eyes? Could be. Could be, yes. <laughs> is, it, is it worn on, on, in the hair or on top of the hair? Could be. Yes, could be. Could be. <laughs> Could you buy this in a millinery store? No. No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Would you buy it in a department store? Yes. Is it made of uh, a material? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, of some matter, you mean? I is it more sheer than opaque? No, it isn't sheer. No, that's uh, four down and six to go. And when you asked of some material, I'm assuming you meant matter of some kind. We... Yes. Mr. Hayes, I want to give you all one more minute. We yes. have a there... minute's conference, John. You may have uh, 25 seconds for a conference. Well, well, I'm I'm something to do with hair, this... Peter? Well, I, I'm no, just because Peter said this something one. about hair. No, no I didn't say anything about hair. He said it have anything to do with a lady's hair feet, but it might be... What, have we touched on protective? What about medicinal, like a... Hair tonic. Like a corn plaster. 
Well, you could. It all depends on where you get horny. <laughs> all right, the 25 seconds is up. Uh, it's four down and six to go, Mr. Hayes. Perhaps it's a wasted question, but uh, is there any uh, medicinal value obtained? Is it uh, a, sort of a protective measure for uh, protection of the human body? Is it medicinal in any no. way, shape, or form? No, I no. don't think we can describe it as being medicinal. Well, I got some friends out there. Yeah, you've got some friends out there. Um, it actually, it's the wrong word. I think you're in the right area, but the wrong word. Medicinal, we have, I think, the habit of accepting as something that well, is it a must be plastic? taken. <laughs> no. Or that is applied with medicine no. specifically. So that's five down and five to go. Well, can standard. you buy this in a drugstore? Yes. Uh... Would it come, is it a liquid? No. No. Six down and four to go. Actually, we can't spend any more time on it, and I do hope you notice I stressed it could be described as something one would wear, because Mr. Pilshaw makes ice bags. I... <laughs> and Mr. Pilshaw, you get the full prize by default of time, and our thanks for being a very interesting guest in what's my life. Good night, sir. Glad to see you. All right, now, in just a moment, we'll meet tonight. Let's come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, who would be recognized by the panel immediately. So they have blindfolds, and the blindfolds are all in place, are they, panel? Yes, they are. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? <laughs> As you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we get right down to the general questioning, which we will begin with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Well, I'm flabbergasted. Uh, <laughs> do you usually make people happy the way you made this audience by just walking in? Not quite that happy. <laughs> uh, well, is that a yes or a no? Well, I think it's a qualified yes. I'm inclined to believe that our guest does make people happy a good deal of the time, so you go ahead, Miss Darling. Well, are you in the entertainment business? Yes! Uh, would you be described as a performer? I hope so. Uh, do you uh, perform on the stage? Yes. Have you also been on the screen? Yes. And I suppose even before this on television? Yes. Uh, are you, um, at times, at least, a comedian? Yes. Uh, are you um, a star comedian working um, by yourself or with studios rather than a partner? Well, help, John! <laughs> Say this, he's working regular. <laughs> well, I think um, he certainly comes well within the norm of the star comedian. Uh, have you ever appeared in a motion picture with a plot? Yes. What? In a motion picture with a plot? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, have you ever been the hero of a love story? Not in a movie. <laughs> Gilgallan? I really did, yes, and I'm right, glad to get rid of him. One down and nine to go, Mr. Hay. What was the last question? Uh, uh, Just, you've never been a hero in a movie with a love, love story. With a love story, the love story. and you got to know? That's, That's right. right. Um, did your fame uh, really, did you really come into being through the medium of television? Yes. Yes? Yes, indeed. <laughs> a star on this particular network? Or were you? Yes! <laughs> and uh, are you a man of many talents? Uh, for instance, did you find it uh, easy to work in sketches along with doing satirical impersonations of celebrities and of people from life? What'd he say? <laughs> I suppose, sir, uh, yes. Um, golly. Uh, are you always 
the comedian, do you ever play straight man in the vernacular for another comedian on your program? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Brunson. Are you only one person? <laughs> Two heads, but one person. <laughs> yes. Do you have some outstanding characteristic that makes you immediately recognizable to all and every? I suppose I do, yeah. <laughs> My voice. <laughs> Are you, uh, uh, do you appear regularly on television? As regularly as possible, my dear. <laughs> Does that mean that you are on every day as opposed to once a week? means both, as a matter of fact. <laughs> uh, you are on once a week and you are on every day. Precisely. Who does that? <laughs> oh! Are you a man that is usually on this panel? Yes! <laughs> We'd like to go nuts. Steve flew in here from the coast this morning. We grabbed him. He hasn't been able to get near a telephone. We won't even let him call his oh, relatives. Oh, what wonderful. a wonderful fun. Yes, <laughs> just a fun. Well, I'll tell you what. Glad to see you. Tell you what we got to do now, Steve. We got to put you to work. You go on over there and make Peter Lind share that seat and see what you oh, can really? do. Yeah, we're going to all tell you to work I, on the I last one. I was wondering why I felt like okay. this crazy you person. We've gone over and sit down at Peter Lind Hayes, and we've got just a little time, panel. So let's see how fast you can be. Will you sign in, please, ma'am? We're going to have just three minutes to do something about this. Jenny? Jenny Gatto, is that right? Uh, is it, uh, Miss or Miss? Miss Gatto, Miss and where are you from? Carlstadt, New Jersey. Carlstadt, New Jersey. All right, now you look at them, let them look at you, then you come on over with me, huh? We uh, are running short of time, so you sit down and we get the panel they are free guesses on the basis of a very quick look at you. We begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think she keeps a pet shop. Keeps a pet shop, Mr. Hayes. I think she flew Steve Allen in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who's that man next to you? <laughs> Mr. Allen. I, uh, I think she's the woman who's been calling me all day when I didn't answer. <laughs> Miss Francis. I think she handles the machine that puts the tea in the bags. Mr. Sir. The tea bags. I think she's a girl and Steve went out to California to see. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers have another look at Miss Ghetto, and at the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. But the panel's got to dig. <laughs> and the panel has got just exactly a minute and 50 seconds. So you all know all the rules, the card flipping and stuff. Miss Ghetto is salaried with that. Let's begin the general questioning with Steve Allen. Oh, dear. Is there a product? How do you play this game? I <laughs> Is there a product connected with what you do? No. That's one down and nine to go. <laughs> Peter Lynn Hay. Uh, do you deal in services? Yes, I do. Uh, do you go to a person's house for this particular service? No, I do not. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. I have a feeling you work for a non-profit making organization. Is that possible? You're incorrect. <laughs> That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Surf. Well, in other words, this, this makes a lot of profit, this place you yes i'm happy to say so uh would it be a place that made uh, uh, more profit in the holidays and other times of year yes could it be some kind of a store yes could be <coughs> is it a big store yes a department store yes is it in new york yes well, you work in a store. <laughs> <laughs> but what is she doing in a store? Oh, a oh, big store. Uh, I just have a oh, quick sure. hunch. Uh, maybe this time of year, I think a very important person will be the one who takes back, takes back things after Christmas. Would you have anything to do with the adjustment division of the store? Complaint. Yeah. yeah, I think that's... Should we... Do we bow on that? Yes. You handle exchanges? Well, no, no, I have no, two no, neckties no. in my pocket. Well, well, <laughs> what is it, Dorothy? I think it's the complaint department. Complaint ah. adjuster, that's right. Very good. Very good indeed. Well, they did it very rapidly, but you rung up a little better than most people do in so short a space of time. And thanks for being our guest in What's Thank My Line. It was nice to have you with us. Thank good night. You.
show is what happens when you get five over there. And we'll be back in just now until next week. This is John Daly saying good night, Dorothy. Good night, fellas. <laughs> good night, everybody. Good night, Peter. You did um, a wonderful job. This thing has gotten smaller than the both of us. <laughs> Good night, Peter. It was nice to have you, and happy vacation, Bennett. Thanks. Good night, John. And good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Life. <laughs> this has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. In association with CBS Television Network. Would this liquor have uh, some of the nectar of the grape in it? Yes. Uh, does it fizzle and bubble at any time? <laughs> yes. Are you a champagne fella? <laughs> <laughs>
effective. Uh, if she used it, uh, would it come in contact with a person? Yes. Well, if a very glamorous and fascinating creature like, let's say, Dorothy or Arlene used this product, would it make them even more fascinating to men? <laughs> Let me see your hand. Hard, yeah. solid grip. Uh-huh. You're going to meet a tall, dark girl. And it's me. <laughs> How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Hunt? Hello, Mr. Hunt. How do you do? Down. All right, Mr. Pilshaw, if you'll come over here now and sit down next to me, we'll get into the free guests, which the panel has, because they have had a chance to meet you, and we begin the free guesses with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Well, um, I don't know, but whatever he makes, I bet it's bigger than a bread box. Mr. Hey. <laughs> I think he breaks in dancing shoes for Arthur Murray. <laughs> Miss Bradford. Oh, I was just going to say, I think he uh, 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 tans <laughs> hides, <laughs> I should say. Let on. Mr. Sir? I think Mr. Culture works on a newspaper. He's a poof reader. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. Let our viewers have another look at Mr. Pilshaw, and at the same time, we will tell them what his line is. The panel's got a date. Okay, Shaw, you understand what we do with these things here. Ten times we flip a card and you've got it all, hands down. All right, Mr. Pilshaw is salaried. Uh, with that, let's begin the general questioning with uh, Peter Lindhay. Oh, um, do you, sir, deal in a product? Yes. Well, is it um, a product that I might use? Yes. <laughs> well, is it a product, if I used it right here and now, apparently I'd look pretty crazy. Is that true? true? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, well, you might, it might be considered that this was not the proper place for you and the product to get together. <laughs> well, is it uh, a product, then, for instance, that Arlene might use? Yes. <laughs> is it something that she also might wear? Yes. Can be said to be worn, yes. Well, I can see why I'd look crazy, because we don't have the same tailors. <laughs> uh, something that she might wear? Yes. Uh, it might be described as being worn. Time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Remington Rand, makers of The Remington, the world's number one electric shaver, present What's my line? And now, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, again, pinch hitting for Steve Allen is our charming and humorous and talented young friend, Peter Lind Hayes. And directly on my left, the lovely lady and the star of her own uh, other television show on another nut work, The Talent Patrol. <laughs> the one and only Arlene Francis. And on my left, a gentleman who was leaving us for a well-deserved vacation, six days in sunny Florida. But he's going to come back to us filled with bottled sunshine next Sunday, Mr. Bennett, sir. <laughs> and on our left is our, our panel moderator. And I hope we'll all be sympathetic and understanding with him tonight because he hasn't won a plaque or an award now for almost four days. <laughs> on my left, poor old John Charles Daly. <laughs> Thank you and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to What's My Line. We've got some people who are visiting us tonight, and uh, they brought with them some occupations, which, as much as I love my friends over on the panel, I trust uh, the panel is going to have a lot of fun and also a lot of difficulty finding out what these folks do. They're very nice people, and uh, with them, we're going to have a famous guest challenger before the panel a bit later on. Uh, but we ought to get things underway, I think, and it's time for the experts to meet our first challenger whose job has to be spotted. So would you sign in? <laughs> what? Well, certainly... what is it? <laughs> I think it, uh, we should say it certainly could. <laughs> Do you, does does uh, poor Mr. Daly mean by that that it also might make them less glamorous to men under certain circumstances? Under certain circumstances. Under, yes, under certain circumstances, I think you could say that. 
sometimes more, sometimes less. Uh, this wouldn't be by any chance some of that gooey cream that a woman smears all over her face? <laughs> no, this is not a gooey cream that a woman smears all over her face. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, is this anything that would either alter, improve, or reveal, or conceal a woman's figure? <laughs> no way! <laughs> no, I think you're being too generous, Mr. Lawrence. This would not alter, reveal, conceal. Oh, what was the other one? Improve. Or improve a woman's figure. You know, I don't think so. <laughs> Two down and eight to go, Mr. Hayes. Has it anything to do with... Uh... A woman's hairpiece. <laughs> no, no. Nothing to do with the hair. <laughs> the woman's hairpiece knows. <laughs> Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Can this be consumed? Yes. Uh, is it uh, liquid rather than solid? Yes. Uh, is it anything that one might have at a festive gathering? Yes. And one would be pretty glad to have it. <laughs> <laughs> Does it uh, come usually in a bottle? Yes. And it would make me look better sometimes, huh? <laughs> is it something that you might toast in the New Year with? Yes. It is, has an alcoholic content of some kind? Yes. Uh, you deal in spirits of some sort, then? Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and what's your telephone number? No. Uh, <laughs> Is it uh, a grain liquor? No. no. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. 